So I've just come out to the garage and everything's kind of turned off out here. It's still nice and sunny outside and as I was walking towards the garage outside I can smell a bit of a burning smell. So I thought, oh crap, quickly grab the camera and just come in. Uh, and I've just pulled out these fuses here but all these were completely off. Um, they're quite warm. And in fact, they're quite quite hot. So that could have been what killed it. I'm not too sure why they're so hot though. Um, but sometimes these things get hot because I've got this below it and the heat just flows up the wall. So yeah, everything's off right now. So I've just checked the voltages on all the cells and they seem fine. Uh, I'm not too sure what the problem is there. They, are, they seem fine. A couple of these cables at the top here are slightly kind of warm to the touch, but nothing more than you'd expect for 32 amps or something. If the um, because this inverter we had the oven on inside, so this would have been putting out its 1900 volt, uh, 1900 watts, and in which case um, it draws 32 amps. So all that kind of was acting as normal, but obviously there's a bad smell, um, and it wasn't me. So let's just have a. I'll just quickly do a bit of a, a sniff test on things, and just come back to you in a second. So these smell burnt all of them um, and they're really hot um, in fact the lighting's really bad in here Let me, it's slightly better um, so when I say hot they're kind of oh, I'd say about 30 degrees it's not like they're hot hot you can't touch it but it's just it is hot um, and I've, I've pulled the fuses out that I had here to disconnect them from the solar panels and when I pulled that out the um, they had a bit of a spark so I'm not too sure what's going on. So these are all off. Obviously right now this is off. So these will definitely be off. These are only on when there's solar power going into them. Um, everything else seems fine. So I'll just turn my BMS unit on. And I'll put a multimeter I'll just unclick this as well. I'll put a multimeter between here and the positives up here and I'll see what the voltages are at the top. So let's try and do that. Okay, so I've just attached that up there just to hold it in place. I want to put the negative on the inverter because that holds it in there. And then I'll connect this up to here and we'll have a look and see what we see. Fortunately, the problem with this multimeter is that the screen is so annoying it's so hard to read it. Stay. It's just as a plane flies over. So we're on multi, yeah, we're on voltage. Good. We got there 74.4. 74.4. Four five. Okay. Not really sure. It seems fine. Um, I guess the next thing I do is actually, well, if I turn the breaker on, the problem with that, if I turn this breaker on here, it's going to give power through to the DC side of these, and if the problem with this is it's blowing a, um, one of the MOSFETs or something, then the MOSFET might be shorted. So that might not be the best idea. Mind you, we've actually got fuses here. So, um, the fuses look fine. So each charge controller has a fuse. So it goes up the wall to the DC side and it comes down to one of these glass fuses. And all these glass fuses, uh, these are 10 amp fuses from memory and they look fine. So, Oh, the camera's rolling. Let's just turn one of these on and I'll stand back a bit. Okay, so there's definitely a short. That popping noise is definitely a short. Where? Um, what else can we do? Okay, so let's change the multimeter over to the test mode 
put this up here. So if we go positive to negative, in fact, yeah, if I go positive to negative, there's a dead short. So there's a dead short on the charge controllers, then how come these 10 amp fuses haven't blown? Um, okay, so let's figure that out. So let's to figure that out. Let's um, there's no power to this. So let's just pull and double check that this is actually a 10 amp fuse. Um, and it's all dark, so it's really hard to see. Um, in fact, it's so hard to see. I can't. I can't see. So I'll just put that aside. I'll pull out the next fuse, and then I'll pull out the last fuse, and now we'll quickly check that there's a sh if there's a short, and I'm just connecting it positive to negative to there, so we should see some resistance really, and we're seeing a dead short, and the only thing that's connected really is the inverter so maybe the inverter's cucked it i'll just get a better angle okay so i've just kind of double checked everything and i've got nothing else connected apart from the inverter so the inverter the grid tie limited inverter here is the only thing now connected um, fuses are out here oh apart from one actually where's that going oh, it's going to the multi meter on my BMS. So let's just pull that as well. That's only like a half amp fuse. Um, it didn't need to be much. Okay, so now what I'll do, given that everything else should be unswitched apart from this cable, let's just quickly try again. Whew, no. So, the thing that's died is a good time inverter. And if I just double check the across the poles here, I wish this screen was better. It's a dead short on the DC side. It can't be anything else but that. So I wonder if that's killed all these at the same time because they're all connected. Um, how do I find that out? Okay, well, pro probably the easiest way to check that is to now, in fact, the first thing to do, yeah, okay, so, so since that's disconnected because the fuse is here, these are all disconnected, which means that these on the DC side going to the battery is disconnected. So, let's see what happens when I put a fuse in. I'll just move the camera a bit. Okay, so that's kind of a good angle ish. Alright, oh, so I've got a fuse. It's one of these blade fuses I used, and let's just try and put this into there. If I can see. Oh, look at that. It's come back to life. Let's just see if it tries to put an output on. Which it should try and do in a second. Yep, looks like that's kind of the output, that's what I would expect. So I'm a hand shaking a bit on my camera. Okay, let's try the next one. Um, of course I dropped it. It's just always the case. Stand back a little bit and try and get that in there. So that works. Interesting. Um, the top one. So that works as well. So the damn grid tie inverter died. I'll just quickly check if that's going to pop back into life. Yep. So that'll turn off in a second when the capacitor runs out of juice. Okay, good. So what we've identified is that the only thing that's plugged in right now to the batteries is the grid time inverter. These all work, so that's good. 
Well, that's quite good. <laughs> it would have been nice if this didn't die though, because that's the most expensive part. Uh, and with the limits of, of, of the grid tie plugged in, um, that's the only thing that um, could be causing the short right now. And it looks like a dead short using the multimeter. The AC side of things seems fine, it's the DC side of things. Um, because the power was still on to it, it didn't blow a, a fuse there. Um, so that's really disappointing, I guess. So what I'll do is to test, to, to double check that, what I'll do is I'll disconnect the positive and negative from the grid tone inverter. And what we'll do is then we'll turn the batteries back on. Hopefully that should just switch back on again because there shouldn't be any issues there. This should all turn back on again and start charging the batteries. And this will um, obviously be disconnected. So let's just quickly do that. Just before I take these cables out, I just thought I'd quickly say what I should have done in hindsight also is to, what, what I've got is I've got these positive negative cables coming up to this terminal block and to this terminal block. This terminal block goes straight down to the negative of the batteries. This one goes through um, some current sensors, then goes up to uh, two circuit breakers, which then goes directly to the batteries. These circuit breakers are 32 amp DC circuit breakers, but obviously there's two of them in parallel, which means that to, to, for this to, to stop, it's going to need to um, blow both of them. What I possibly should have had was a 32, or maybe this pulls 32 amps, so potentially I should have had a 40 amp fuse or breaker on the feed into the inverter. And that way, that's the thing that would have blown not these ones and it would have meant that uh, it would have been far easier to diagnose because that way I could I'd be able to see a 32 amp or a 40 amp um, fuse blown here and everything else would potentially have kept on running and there wouldn't have been an issue so it's good that it obviously it blew these but these are parallel together so I'm not too sure if that obviously that would mean that um, for this to blow um, it would have blown one and then the other potentially um, yeah I'm not too sure potentially both at the same time so 32 amps but there's two of them so yeah it would be uh, it would be split across both so it could have potentially have pulled 60 amps before this had blown or 60 70 amps before this had blown or popped its little thing so uh, yeah should have had something here to really just um, help with that and that way this would definitely be limited to a max of 40 amps if I had a 40 amp breaker or 40 amp fuse here um, it's not a problem unless there's there's obviously a fault with it it runs at 32 amps normally so uh, it's only if a fault with it happens that you want it to, to pop something or a fuse as quickly as possible and not take anything else out. Thankfully, by the look of it, it hasn't taken anything else out apart from itself. So, really, I'll, what I'll do is let's disconnect this, um, check it again, and then uh, I'll take it off the wall, and then we're going to have to open it up and see what's going on inside. Okay, so now that it's disconnected, let's just do another check. And yes, zero, 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 which means. Oh, that LCD screen is useless. Uh, that means it's a short. So, what a pain. What a pain. So, it's died. Poor inverter. Okay, let's pull it apart and figure out what's going on.